Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to The Walk. Today is Sunday, June 6th, and today we are talking about the freedom that we have as followers of Jesus Christ. So before we jump into the message, let's um, kick it off with some prayer, and then we'll go right into it. Father God, I thank you for this message, and I thank you for the fact that we do have freedom as followers of you. I thank you for the fact that the things that we do wrong are not held against us, but are covered and removed by your blood because you paid that sacrifice for us on the cross. Lord, we praise you for who you are. We ask that you continue to guide us and lead us and show us the things that you would have us do in order to serve and glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. So as I said, today we're talking about freedom and the fact that we do have freedom as followers of Jesus Christ. And I know that according to the world standards, they say, oh, there's all these things that you won't do because they don't glorify Christ. And because of that, it bounds you. But my prayer is that as we go through this message, you're gonna see that that's not true at all. In fact, followers of Christ have more freedom than people who don't choose to follow Christ. So first of all, we have to level the playing field. The bottom line is every single human being on the face of this earth is a sinner. We all sin, we all mess up. We all do things that do not glorify Christ. In Romans 3, 9 and following, this is what it says. What shall we conclude then? Do we have any advantage? Not at all. For we have already made the charge that Jews and Gentiles alike are all under the power of sin. That means it doesn't matter if you're from that Jewish culture or if you're from another culture, we all sin. We all do things that we should not do. And we all have consequences for that. Verse 10, as it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands, and there is no one who seeks God. There are all time, for all of us, there are times when we are not seeking God. We are intentionally choosing to do things that don't glorify Christ. None of us has it right all of the time. Verse 12, all have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one can't find anybody that's blameless. Their throats are open graves. Their tongues practice deceit. The poison of vipers is on their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Ruin and misery mark their ways. And the way of peace they do not know. There is no fear of God before their eyes. When you're choosing to follow those fleshly desires, rather than those godly desires, that describes every single one of us. The playing field is level. Nobody's a better person than anybody else because in God's eyes, all sin is the same. One sin is the same as thousands of sins. A little white lie is the same as murder. Sin is sin in God's eyes and it separates all of us from God. When God looks at us and sees our sin, he cannot be near us because he's too holy. However, when we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, it changes and the playing field is no longer level. Because we've made that decision to follow Christ, because we've made that decision that we understand what Christ did on the cross and we accept what he's done on the cross and we say, yes, Lord, I want to follow you. That sin is removed from us, even though we don't deserve to have it removed. And that's where the freedom comes into play. I know we looked at Romans 8 earlier this week, but the Holy Spirit was clear. We need to come back to this and we need to really examine this freedom that we have. Our faith releases us from being condemned because of the sin that we do. And there's gonna be sin that we do today, but we're, it, that sin is already removed by what Christ did on the cross. So in Romans 8.1, this is what it says. 
Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. Okay, let's break that down. What does it mean? First of all, you're not condemned because of your sin, because you are in Christ Jesus, because you accept what he did on that cross and what the price he paid. And through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit gives you life, and it sets you free from the law that only exposes sin and death. Keep in mind, in the Old Testament, the law was given, and the law was given as a guide toward holiness. What actually ended up happening, though, is it revealed sin. So the law is still useful. The law is still relevant because it helps us understand things that don't glorify Christ so that we can continue to grow and be more Christ-like in our relationship with Christ and do that less often and remove those sins one by one. Are we ever going to be sin-free? No. But that law identifies the sin. That's what law did. Christ came into the picture paid that price on the cross for us, brought in that grace that we don't deserve and removed all of that sin. Verse three, for what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. He was the offering that paid the price for our sins. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us, who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Stop and think that through. So the Old Testament believers had the law. The law identified all of their sin. Not one single person could fulfill every single letter of the law. However, in verse 4, it says, in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us. Now that we have that grace and that unmerited favor and Christ has paid the price for our sins, we are fully meeting the requirement of the law because that sin is removed, that sin is gone, it's no longer in existence. Even the sins that I'm gonna commit five, six months down the road are already removed from my record. You are completely sin free. And in that, you have freedom in knowing that you can have every single step in your life ordained by God, knowing that you can serve Christ without being like, oh, I messed this up six months ago, so I really shouldn't do children's ministry because you know, I, you know, I said a cuss word six months ago. No. That's not the case. It is removed from you. And you are called to step forward. And you can have confidence in stepping forward because of what Christ has done, not because of what you have done. You are free from the things that you do that you know you shouldn't. That's where that freedom comes in. Verse 5. Those who live according to the flesh have set their minds on what the flesh desires, but those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. This verse is about those God goggles I'm always talking about. You can either be following what your flesh desires, or you can be following what the Spirit desires. And sometimes you're going to do one, sometimes you're going to do the other. The goal is to get to the point where you're doing what the Spirit desires more. And as you grow in your relationship with Christ, you will find that that will be the case. You will do better and better at following what the Spirit desires. Verse 6, the mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. Verse 7, the mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. But those who are in the realm of the flesh those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. Right there, if you're studying this scripture, you can make one of those T charts. On one side, put flesh. On the other side, put the spirit. And compare the two. If you're living by the flesh, your mind is set on the fleshly desires. 
Your mind is governed by the flesh and it's death. The mind is gov governed by the flesh is hostile to God. And those who are in that flesh cannot please God. That would be on one side. But on the other side, if you're living in accordance with the spirit, your mind is set on what the spirit desires. Your mind is governed by the spirit, which is life and peace. And you're no longer hostile to God. You're one of his children and you're cherished by him. That's a big comparison. They're complete opposites. And what's interesting is we constantly have this battle going back and forth between our flesh and what, doing what the spirit is leading us to do. Sometimes we get it right and sometimes we don't. We're never fully on one column, except for the fact that when we understand what Christ did on that cross, it permanently places us in that column where we're pleasing God because that sin is removed. It doesn't matter if you're in the progress of that sin, if it's in your past, if it's in your future, it doesn't matter, it is removed. And that's the freedom that we're talking about today. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God lives in you, if you've asked Jesus to be Lord of your life, the spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of, this, because of sin, the spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to the, your mortal bodies of his spirit who lives in you. Go back to that T-chart. Now you're writing on that right side where everything is about being in the spirit. So you've got the spirit of God living in you. You belong to Christ. Um, the spirit gives life because of righteousness. You have righteousness. Um, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of the spirit that lives in you. Verse 12. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if, you, if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. As your relationship with Christ grows, your self-control grows. And what God expects of you continues to build and he's gradually moving you towards the things that he's going to call you to do. He knows when you're ready for it. You don't know when you're ready for it. If God had told me a year ago that I'd be doing the walk, I would have been like, no way, no way, I'm not doing that. And I would have run probably. He waited until I was ready for it and he's gonna wait for you to be ready for it. But you've got to be continually, continually trying to build your relationship with Christ, and that happens in the prayer closet. You spend that time in prayer, you're reading your scriptures, you're learning more about God and your relationship with him. Verse 14, for those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. That's another thing that can go on that T-chart. The Spirit who received you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. Abba is a way of saying Daddy. It's that informal, very intimate title that you can give to God. And he is your Lord. He is your King, but he's also your Daddy. He's the one that you can run to when you know you messed up. He's the one that you can pour your heart out to when things are really hurting you. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. The Spirit validates and continually reminds you that you are God's little girl or little boy. And he cherishes you and wants to wrap you up in his loving arms. And the question is, will you let him? Or are you gonna follow that flesh? Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, 
if indeed we share in our sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. It's not easy to follow Christ. And sometimes it means you're gonna be persecuted and that means that you do suffer. And when that hurts you, it also hurts God. Be okay with that. Be so focused on glorifying Christ that what the people around you say doesn't matter, it doesn't hinder you, it doesn't stop your pursuit of your relationship with Jesus Christ. As we move on, there's more about freedom in Galatians 5, and this is what it says. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. You do not have to continue in the habits that you have. You do not have to continue to try and please people. You are here to please the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the creator of the universe. And he is so pleased when he looks at you because that sin was removed by Christ on that cross. And he doesn't see that sin. He sees that you're praising him. He sees that you're serving him. He sees the righteousness of Jesus Christ. We don't deserve that righteousness. That's what that free gift of grace is all about. So as you follow Christ, as you go through your week, walk with assurance in the fact that you are free. You're free from that burden of sin. You're free from having to please people. You're free from all of that because Christ paid the price for you on that cross. Let's close in prayer. Father God, I thank you for the fact that you have paid the price for us on that cross. And because of that, we are free to serve you. Those, all those things that we do that mess up, all those things that people throw back in our face and say, remember you did this and you did this and you did that. All of that is removed and you don't even see it. What you see when you look at us is the righteousness of Jesus Christ and that gives us the confidence, the strength, and the boldness to continue to step forward in following you. Lord, help us to keep those God goggles on and continue to be aware of what the Spirit would show us so that we don't miss those opportunities to serve you and we can constantly be glorifying you. In Jesus' name, amen. As you go into your prayer closet today, pray over those ways that you can be glorifying him and, and really pour your heart out to him over the things that you're hesitant to do, that you feel like you're being called to do. And believe me, he's gonna help you work through that and get you ready to answer that calling. Have a wonderful day, God bless, and keep walking the walk.